George Fink, that's F I N K. And which branch of the military you were? Navy. And what are we talking about today? What what ship did you serve the, on? The Quincy. A well, that's a, I served with this. I commissioned this ship and I decommissioned it. Okay. Then it was recommissioned. Then it was decommissioned. It was re it was recommissioned in Korea. Okay. Then it was decommissioned, and that was it. And I got my plank from the top deck, and that was about it. And they went to, they destructed for steel. What was your role on the ship? I was a second class communications officer. What does a second class communications officer do? It handled the whole radio area, and uh, I was I was selected. I was on an admiral staff most of my time in the navy on the different ships I transferred to. Yeah. So when I commissioned the uh, Quincy in December the 15th, 1943, okay, I commissioned it. And then we went on the Trinidad to Venezuela shakedown cruise in that type of the year. So and what are we, so this is the first anniversary of the old Quincy, right? No, I never saw the old Quincy. Oh, okay. Uh, I, 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 after I found out, I got out of high school, I found out the Quincy was sunk by a torpedo. <laughs> you know, oh, wow. But they lost, I think, 971 people. Uh, this, this, this ship here, the Quincy, carried 1,700 people. Yeah. It's quite a bit. Yeah, is it pretty good? Tell me yeah. about tell me about this. Yes. Now this is something different. I was aboard the uh, a USS South Dakota, and I just came back from North Africa invasion, at November 8, 1942. I was only in the, in the Navy three weeks. I didn't get my, I went to Quantit Point, Rhode Island. Three weeks later, about midnight, they told me pack my bag. I said we're going. We're going on a train. They took me to New York City. They took me to that Pennsylvania. They took a big truck waiting off the train, taking us to, to Pier 92, which where the sh ship was anchored. And that was the USS Arkansas, mm -hmm. DB-33. And I got in the morning. That morning, I was just getting out of the way. In the morning, then found out that I just barely saw the Statue of Liberty because we were out at sea that morning. So on November 9th, we invaded Africa. Yeah. Yeah. So that was... I was there for a while, then he come back of the flagship, and back to Norfolk. I got transferred, and I had to drive. I had to drive all the way to Boston to pick up the admiral's car, and came back for the and from because that's where I was going to a new ship. So I got transferred to to the uh, naval barracks in Boston for about two months, and I was waiting. And then uh, when the ship was commissioned, I got transferred to the ship. Yeah. They were all new people aboard ship. I was probably mostly most experienced because it was all this new ship, and they were getting all new people aboard ship. So after I got aboard the, the Quincy, we had the shakedown in Trinidad, and then we came back in Trinidad from Trinidad, we were back into Boston, and they re overhauled all the bugs and got all the bugs out of the new ship. We were, we were firing at uh, drones in. Trinidad shooting down the drone planes and see how good our act, our, what do you call it, guns were shooting. So we got back, after I got back from uh, Trinidad, then we went to Boston, and we went out there for about a week, and then the ship got underway, and it went to Scotland. We went up there in Belfast, Scotland, and we stayed up there for about two or three months, and while we were up there, we were actually practicing bombarding the beaches and so forth. And then after that, uh, we had uh, Douglas MacArthur and his assistant, which was the at River Admiral Kirk, came aboard ship up there to inspect the ship before we know something was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So they inspected the ship and they saw how good the ship was and just brand new and we never had no action or nothing. So, uh, and then uh, we got off the ship and then we we waited and we practiced quite a few up up in. In uh, Belfast, we pr practice our bombardment up there for about two or three, for three or four weeks, and then uh, later on we got underway, and uh, we found out that we were going to invade Normandy. So uh, we went, we went aboard ship, and the ship got underway, and it met in some wreck, about about.
couple of days, it meant the whole crew, the whole damn fleet of ships that was out, headed for Normandy. Yeah. And about eight or nine hundred. So after that, and then we we got worded that there were that the, the weather was pretty bad, and in January third and fourth, the seas were very bad. They so they postponed it to the twenty four hours. And after 24 hours, they checked the weather and they said, there's no chance we can call it off. It's too late. We have to go with it. And what the circumstances would be, would be, that's it. Was it. So at 5.45 a.m. on June the 6th, we started bombarding Normandy. But they already saw us. So they were firing at us and they were shooting at us and knocking the wires off our antennas and the, paper, the water was splashing on the ship. So we went. We so we bombarded them for about three or four days until uh, about the June the 16th. And after June the 16th, we went back to Portland, England. But we had to refuel our ship, fuel and guns and ammunition, food. And then we went back there, and then uh, we just we were actually supporting the Navy, the airlines and the aircraft carriers. We were shooting. And then about we uh, after about three or four weeks after that, we went back to uh, France and we went into Cherbourg, Marche, and we bombarded those things on there for two or three days. And then we and then we took quite a few of the enemy uh, replacements out. So and then one day uh, we got out of there because the army came in, took over the city. That was we did a one day's out and we got out and had a good day. And have you talked about about the ship? You said this was the old ship, yes, or the new ship. And yeah. where where was your position on here? On the open bridge, you can see. Let me see. You can see it here. You turn it around a little bit. Where's see? the open bridge? The, the open bridge. You see that swap there right there? Mm -hmm. That's the last part of the ship. That's the open bridge. It's about twelve stories from the baseline up to the corner. And my my job, I was a communication officer, and I wore a headset. And I had field glasses. And during the whole course of my career, my watch was on the open bridge. And I had field glasses, and I spotted any looking for anything we saw, planes or anything that's unusual. And the best part of it, right below the bridge on the other here, the captain and the uh, lieutenant commander were peeping out of two people while I was above them. And I had a headset, and I think I got I you know, passed the information to the captain and the commanders. Yeah. So, well, I appreciate you bringing this down. Yeah. Um, if you've got some time, the gentleman next door is Warren Motts, who yeah. runs the Motts. Mm -hmm. right. Which one are you, Joy? The right house. Uh, the right. So uh, this is you, yeah, yeah, taken yeah. July 26, 1944, yeah, yeah. and yeah. my partner is a radio man. He's much taller than you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was pretty small. Yeah. yeah. That's great. But I, I served all my time at, as on the bridge, and of course I was on the, uh, I was on my first ship, and I was just got out of the, the road camp. I was at the USS Arkansas. Then I got transferred to the Arkansas, and I had to go to the South Dakota. But the South Dakota was up in Newfoundland, so I had to t go to Bangor, Maine, and wait for the, the destroyer taking me up to the ship in Newfoundland, where I got on in Newfoundland. I got on the ship. The South Dakota. Mm -hmm. In the next nine months, we patrolled the uh, convoys that went up through Russia and all that stuff in Russia. Yeah. So and that's how we got back. Yeah, that's another picture. Yeah, I was young. I was just nine, twenty years old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, eighty-five now. <laughs> that's a big difference. That's great.